So we'll call the uh, meeting to order tonight on June 22nd, 2023 for the Deerfield Conservation Commission. Um, the meeting is being held remote on Zoom. Um, certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative, alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, MGO chapter 30A, section 20 until March 31, 2025. Uh, we have all posted all the remote connections on the town websites and looks like uh, we have uh, people attending. So that must have worked out all right. So. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order uh, this evening and get started. Uh, overall, the meeting guidelines um, that we have is please speak one at a time, um, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. Um, also, just two additional requests for this evening. Uh, if you want to speak, uh, please request that to the chair and then be recognized. And then, unless you're presenting, um, let's keep the comments, if possible, down to a two to three minute um, time frame. That would be great. Um, so next, we'll identify the uh, members of the commission present tonight. So we'll go through a roll call. Um, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, here. Yeah, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, here. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, here. All right, and Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, here. All right, great. And we have Chris tonight. Uh, Amy's on vacation this week, but Chris will help us guide through the, at least the logistics of getting this all put together tonight. So that's good. Um, so the first order of business that we have to take a look at were the mini minutes submitted um, from the 6-1-2023 uh, meeting. Um, everybody has received and reviewed. Is that true? Yeah, is there any comments or revisions that would be ne needed to the minutes as they're written? No, okay, good. I, I don't have anything there either. So I would take a uh, a motion to accept the um, minutes as, as written. I move that we accept the minutes as written. All right, do we have a second? Ben Byrne, I'll second. All right, there's a motion on the table. Any other comments from the commissioners? No, we do a roll call vote to accept the minutes as written. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, I'll abstain since I, I missed the meeting. Okay. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Ann Mary. Oh. Um... You know what? I don't think I was at this meeting either. I'm sorry. I got distracted. And now that I'm reading the notes, I wasn't there. So I don't even know if my last motion counted, to be honest with you. So we, you might need to redo that. Oh. Uh, sorry about that. I was thinking the meeting before and I was distracted. And yeah, we've had now, a bunch of meetings lately. Oh, geez. I don't know all the details of all of that, but. Yeah, someone else should make a motion, I think. Yeah. So I guess we'll. Um... We'll revive the we'll table that motion that's on the uh, the table right now, and I'll ask for a new motion to uh, accept the minutes as written from 6 1 2023. Uh, ben Byrne, I'll make a motion to accept the meetings as posted. All right, Ben, thank you. Do I have a second? Uh, Sean? Second, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I wrote them, so I know, but you I, can oh, okay. approve. As long as you don't make motion <laughs> yeah. yeah okay, okay. then i i second that okay yeah. so the motion on the table uh to accept and we'll do uh without any other further comment and thanks Anne mary for pointing that out we'll take a roll call vote on this um kate devlin kate devlin abstain yep uh sean libby sean libby aye ben burn ben burn aye Anne marie and Anne mary Anne Marie, abstain yeah, uh, Pete Law, I. So it passes three, three no and two abstain. So great. We'll get that in place. Thank you very much. That in my done pile. All right. Um, 
so now we go to a couple of things on the old business uh, area. Um, the first one is um, the Eagle Brook track site visit um, relative to the erosion control compliance. Um, so on June 5th, uh, 2023, Sean and I um, attended a site visit um, at the project to review the erosion control devices prior to the start of construction. Uh, we met with Tom Johnson of Proterra and Josh St. Laurent of RAD Sports, who is a site foreman. Um, we did note a, a few issues of concerns, um, and we discussed those with Tom and Josh. All concerns um, they said would be addressed, and I have had sub subsequent input from, from Tom at Proterra, and it looks like they have been. Um, I'm going to stop up there in the next day or two to to uh, just meet with Josh once again. Uh, but some of the concerns was there just wasn't quite enough stakes um, in the in the in the waddles. Um, then we had to move some waddles. We had to replace some other ones. Um, they didn't have the full um, 50 feet of backup uh, in the area. Um, but again, um, they were open to making those changes. And uh, from what I've seen from some of the information that's been sent to me, um, that has been done. So, and I will review again. We'll go up there in the next couple of days. If anybody wants to meet me, I'll let you know when I'm, I'm heading that way. So any other conversation on that one? Sean, you have any other comments as you were there? Uh, no, I think, um, you know, that <laughs> the erosion concerns are pretty minimal considering yeah. where the work is concentrated. So. Um, no, I'd be happy to go, uh, if maybe. you're uh, going to set up a time, um, but maybe I don't after it. tomorrow, when we do the other ones, we'll talk about later and <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll see. Sounds, yeah. Sounds good. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the first item, uh, unless there's any other discussion, we'll move on to item two, um, which is the RDA, uh, Bement parking lot hearing continuation, um, for the uh, RDA that they submitted, um, that was submitted by um, Wright uh, Ostermeyer Landscaping Architects. Emily Wright, is anybody here tonight? I don't see Emily or anybody else from Bement. They did send us a notice that they are reviewing the, pro the project. Um, they're looking at it. Uh, we did ask Emily to show up tonight just to make sure that if there was any updates and that we would have to, um, it would be like the permission from the applicant to continue with the uh, the hearing to the next um, meeting. Um, so we, we opened the hearing tonight. I don't see any comments from anybody. Um, are there any other comments from the commissioners? I've sent out some information that I received back from DEP, uh, from Mark Stinson. It does look, you know, what we were talking about last time, it was, you know, he kind of confirmed what we're, we're looking at. There's a lot of BVWs in the area. Um, it would probably need an NOI because of, of, of that. And um, they would have to come back to us with a lot more detail of, of what they needed um, as we go forward. So I believe, as we suggested last week, that, uh, you know, or a couple of weeks ago, um, that it will require a notice of intent because it is within the wetland area. Um, and I did actually, I didn't do a drive by, but I did a bicycle by the other day, um, took a look at the area. And um, yeah, it's, um, we'll need, I think, some more information on that. But not seeing any uh, anybody else um, on tonight. I I presume we can just on our own um, continue the hearing to the uh, next meeting and um, reach out to Bement and um, Wright Oster Ostermeyer Landscaping um, to see just what they want to do with the project. But I think we'll keep it open. So I would take a uh, a motion to uh, continue the hearing until our next meeting, which is on, oh, 
I have it here right in front of July me. July 27th. July 27th. Thank you. <laughs> um, and any other discussion before we head to a motion? Any, any other thoughts? If we already know that we will be asking for a notice of intent, can we just deny the RDA and and now, or is that not appropriate? Yeah, that, that's what I'm wondering without the applicant present, and nice. maybe Chris can can help us with that, but um, whether we can go ahead and, and make that determination, um, but they also indicated on some other emails that they are reconsidering. Um, so I, I'm just not sure, Chris, All right. with your expertise, can can that be done by the commission here now to um, to continue the hearing until next time? Uh, either continue the hearing or make, uh, as Sean was saying, kind of a determination that there would be a um, a finding that it, it is applicable. And I, I don't have form two in my eye. I think it would be uh, form two, three, or no, four, two, four or five, um, that it would require an NOI. Sure. Um, I think if it's clear cut, and the commission feels comfortable making that decision tonight. There's not an issue with it, um, but if they want to be more cautious, then it can certainly be continued. I think either way is acceptable, though, from my understanding. We can discuss it with them at the next meeting. Continue this, and then we can do what we need to with the form and start up, you know, the NOI, or at least start that conversation with them. The next yeah. Meeting. Okay. Because I think they were kind of. You know, going back and forth amongst themselves of it was going to cost them X amount of money to get a you know study and delineation because we will need a an NOI and that'll be the wetlands delineation and yeah. you know other orders of conditions and stuff because they are in is a they're right in the BBW uh, they're in a uh, the FEMA uh, flood zone A15 which is a one year flood zone <laughs> um, uh, but as I studied the um, FEMA documents that doesn't say anything more about it other than that's what it's uh, classified as. So floods annually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you drive by there every spring, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, well, I'll take you continue. whatever you guys want to do. Well, you know, what, what are your thoughts? I only would hate to waste their time if they can start moving forward on an NOI now, which they can do, even if we just tell them that's where we're leaning anyway. Um, yeah, I think we can do that kind of, you know, yeah. Right. So Give we can continue indication. this. Yeah. I guess it does no harm to continue this. Anyone else? Hey. Yeah. And not having any representative from the applicant. Uh, yeah. um, all right. I uh, I yeah, I just either, but I'm not clairvoyant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for Bement's RDA application for a parking lot at zero Ferry Road, uh, map 40, lot 16, to the next scheduled meeting on July 27th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Okay. I'm and Bernal, table. Second. Okay, we have a second on the motion. Any other and further conversation, discussion from the commissioners? Okay, hearing that, I'll take a roll call vote on that um, motion uh, to continue it to July 27. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean. John Libby, aye. Uh, ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Ann Mary. Ann Mary Cloutier, aye. Yeah, and Pete Law, aye. So we'll. It passes 5-0, and we'll we'll just continue that discussion down the road, I guess. Because um, we and, and sorry, I should have brought this up earlier, but um, I know Amy sent a note to um, Emily Wright that she would have to show up in this meeting um, to discuss it and even to do the continuation. So um, without her here, it's, it's tough to do. Okay. All right. Uh, the next item tonight is the NOI for the DA Tennis Pavilion hearing continuation. 
Um, this was filed by Andrew DeMaio of Deerfield Academy uh, for renovations to the uh, tennis pavilion structure. Um, the, uh, the consultants here tonight would be um, from Ty and Bond, and I do see uh, Chuck Cross, 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 Crochy, yeah. Crochies. Okay, yep. sorry, buddy. That's okay. <laughs> and Andrew White, and I think last time it was Melissa Cody, but it's uh, they're going to be Chuck and Andrew tonight. Yeah, it's okay. just us two tonight. Okay. Well, why don't you give us a little bit of update? And uh, you know, you don't. We went through it a lot last time. I did get some information back from DEP. Um, I have a a couple of things to talk about, but if you you know if you guys want to go through just a quick update for the commissioners, that'd be great. Sure. Um, <clears throat> for the record, my name is Charles Croce. I'm a professional engineer licensed in Massachusetts. I work for Time Bond with an office out of Westfield, Mass. I have with here my colleague uh, Andrew White, who is also a professional engineer, and uh, we're, we're representing Deerfield Academy for this tennis pavilion renovation. And if I could share my screen, I'm just going to do a quick overview of kind of what we showed last time. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if people could see my screen or not. Yeah, I got it. Uh, everybody else see it all right? Okay. Are you seeing, um, can you see yep. my cursor? Yes. Yeah, I see your cursor and some purple lines and red lines and green lines Excellent. and yellows. Yeah. All right, so um, <clears throat> I assume everyone's familiar with the Deerfield Academy campus. Did you, did you see me slide another screen onto the? Yep. Okay, yep. this is the Deerfield Academy campus, and um, you know, here's Route 510, Old Main Street. So on the south end of campus is the current tennis pavilion. It's really a um, uh, uh, just a structure, and it's open air pretty much around all sides. Um, currently, uh, the tennis pavilion sits uh, within the floodplain, so it's um, below base flood elevation. Um, it's outside of any kind of wetland buffer area. We have the wetlands plotted that were nearby, so we're not in any wetland area. Um, the the structure itself has the ability to lower, uh, the, I would say, these canvas shades that come down from within the structure and that comes down to um, close off the open areas you know, to, to reduce wind, rain, and just weather, uh, and even some external light from getting underneath there while uh, certain tennis matches are being played. Deerfield Academy would like to improve the performance of the uh, of the ability to lower those, uh, those shades, and they're, they're come up with a, a project to replace them with, they're called um, steel coil doors. So they're they're actually metal doors now. Instead of the canvas shades, metal doors come down. They roll out from under the structure, come down, and they can also roll back up. So, um, and as part of the construction to install those doors, and they're going around all four sides, um, there is some fill within the 100-year uh, floodplain right at the door jams. So there's a little bit of fill, and also we have a curb where the doors um, will set down on. Um, that also goes around the structure. And we calculated that fill to be about 20 cubic yards. So we needed to provide compensatory grading or compensatory storage. So right here shown in red, that's where we're providing our compensatory storage to offset that filling. And it's about 25 cubic yards. Um, and then- so that, Okay, that's where the, the cut is. I mean, the, the fill's going in. Right. The fill, Where's the cut and the fill? The fill is right around um, the structure, right where the, we have to put in like this, these metal, um, you know, guide rails so that the doors yeah. come down on. So there's a little bit of fill in each of the door openings. So we yeah. added up all those fill. Plus we have a, a small curb to make sure that when the doors close, they close flush. Because it really, the goal is to limit, you know, light, wind and rain from going into the structure at certain times. So, um, we calculated that fill and that's when we came up with 20 cubic yards and then you know okay. to make the compensatory cut we we're doing it in the red area here which it has a slope so we're cutting out of the slope there um to to make that up okay so you got 25 in the cut and 20 in the in the fill that's correct okay thank you and um i could also go over the comments from dep if that's 
if that's something you want um, to do again. Yeah, we do want to get into the, and I think we can just address, I think, three of the comments from DEP on the um, okay. outstanding order of conditions. But, um, but yeah, please go ahead. And but the, those were the some of the comments I would want to make tonight too. Is yeah, so this is a diagram where um, DEP indicated that there was three open order of conditions. Um, one was an ORAD, which was yeah. really just a, a determination by the commission about it, I believe, some wetland delineation that occurred. And that that's a very old um, open order of conditions. We were not involved in that. So we asked DEP, how do we close that out? And they said to submit a request for a certificate of compliance, and we have prepared that application and submitted it to the town this week um so, so you, you prepared the ORAD and, and sent that into us okay yeah we we repaired the uh, request for a certificate of compliance for the ORAD and, and submitted it this week yeah yep. great yep good and then um there was two other open um order of conditions and uh it, one was related to the ice rink and field house which is right here and it's shown in green and it was had to deal with building the Zamboni ramp, the fire lane, and some cut, you know, down in the uh, floodplain area. Um, and then the other one was the construction of the health center, which is shown here outlined in blue. Mm -hmm. That was basically the, you know, building the health center and then repaving the um, roadway that heads down to the athletic fields. And as you can see from this photo, you know, both projects have been completed. Um, Kind of a while ago not too long ago but a little while ago you can see almost from this photo that both areas are very stable they're completed i was the engineer of record on both drawings on both projects i mean and, and i can attest now that they were built in compliance with the plans and we also submitted a request for a certificate of compliance to the town this week for both of those open order of conditions so you okay. should be seeing those as well um, uh, okay and then I just want to make a point that uh, the orange area are that's a an order of condition that was closed, and um, we got a certificate of compliance. So the work that we're proposing, although it's on the same parcel, it does not overlap with the open order of conditions. It's the site area um, is located not in an area that has an open order. It's it's here yeah. shown in red, and it's over here uh, where we have our cut. I just wanted to, uh, you know, yeah, you know as well. No, I appreciate that, uh, and that you've submitted the uh, the completion uh, of those OOCs uh, to the town because that yes. was going to be one of my. I, I did find out that there is precedent that even though it's a, a it's not right in the area. Uh, but there is an overall parcel where conditions on uh, have open order conditions, so there is presence there that we could could work on and we are actually working with another applicant not too far away from you on closing out a bunch of uh, orders of conditions as well um, so if we could do that and those were the three that I was looking at uh, 0177 0209 and 0212 uh, those are the only outstanding ones uh, if those are in we can get that registered so if we can uh, you know, look at a, a condition to you know close those out, get everything up to date on the parcel. Uh, that would be wonderful. I think three months will give you enough time to get it to the registry and close everything out. Or yeah, um, I'm sure we could work with uh, Deerfield Academy and yeah, and, and get get those closed out right away. You know, as, okay, as quickly as possible. Yeah, they're they're you know motivated to to close those out for sure. Yeah. Great, that'd be great. And then we can uh, clean up that parcel and um, won't have to deal with that again. So that would be a condition that I would consider. I'll, I'll leave it up to the other commissioners to discuss in a minute. And then in addition, um, as with, um, that I sent to, out with the forms um, that went out um, for the uh, North Main Street water main, um, there are, additional Deerfield conditions for erosion control. I know you have it uh, outlined uh, very specifically uh, in your plan, um, but there would be order conditions that we put together um, that I believe Melissa have seen. I'm not sure if you guys have saw that in the other one, but it'd be basically the same 
okay, same yeah. stuff that we would that we put together. So okay, uh, the one condition would be to you know look at cleaning out the outstanding order of conditions uh, within the next three month period, and then uh, condition two would be the addition of the uh, Deerfield uh, conditions relative to erosion control. Um, processes and those would be outlined when we we'd set in the form five <laughs> i can't remember but that's kind of what i'm thinking right now and and um anything else from the applicant um that you want to go over tonight no i think i think we're good unless unless you have any other uh questions we'll be happy yeah mm -hmm. and i'll open that up to the other commissioners and um and then for discussion um I think we sent you the notes and what we got back from different people. So does anybody else have any comments, concerns on this this uh, project? I see Sean nodding no. <laughs> Kate's <a> no. <laughs> I can't see uh, the other ones on my screen. I'm sorry. Uh, but Ben or um, Ann Mary, yeah, yeah. anything? Okay. Okay. So I think if everybody's in agreement, the applicant and the and the commissioners, then I would look at uh, uh, taking a motion to you know accept the uh, the NOI, close out the hearing here um, tonight, with the exception with uh, I'm going to say two conditions. One would be to close out the open um, OOCs. Um, that are outstanding, which would be 142. Yeah, you can go through the number 0017, 0209, 0212 um, in the next 90 day period. And the second one be that we'll provide the additional um, Town or Deerfield um, conditions relative to erosion control uh, measures um, that would be similar to uh, what we put together um, for the uh, North Main Street water main. So that is a very long bodily emotion that I just outlined. So hopefully somebody can uh, make it more concise. <laughs> Do you need the open order numbers in the motion? Um, Sounds like you want them. <laughs> can you repeat them again? Uh, no, I think we can just say um, As the, three, the three outstanding open OOCs um, and I'm looking for the, the name of the parcel. Well, excuse me one second. Um, well, map 61, lot 12. Is that what it is? Albany Road. Um, That's the tennis pavilion structure. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, right. 61, lot 12. So the, the, uh, the three um, outstanding open order conditions mm -hmm. relative to that um yeah that that would work we don't have to get into details and then you know as discussed tonight because that'll be uh tonight's <clears throat> discussion is recorded so it'll be on record so and you said in the addition of our deerfield special order of conditions as it relates to erosion control yeah okay i can take a crack at that um i move to approve the notice of intent for the De deerfield academy tennis pavilion uh located at uh 27 albany road map 61 lot 12 uh with the following conditions that the three outstanding orders uh are um have certificates of compliance within three months and that uh additional deerfield special order of conditions regarding erosion controls uh will be added uh and followed Okay, there's a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Ben Byrne, I'll second. Okay, so we have the, the motion, which I won't repeat in entirety, but you did a great job, Sean, in, in putting that summary together. Um, any other discussion from the commissioners? I see some nodding, I don't hear anything. So. Um, with that, I'll go ahead with a roll call to um, accept the motion that's on the table, um, to accept the NOI with the um, various conditions uh, outlined this evening. Um, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. 
Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. And Pete Law, aye. So the motion passes 5 0. And uh, um, Amy, which is our, our building assistant, will be back next week. So we'll start working up the forms and, and, and getting that out to, uh, to move ahead. So you should see that probably sometime next week when she gets back uh, from okay. vacation and getting caught up with everything. Excellent. Uh, thank you. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. Thank Andrew, you. thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Good luck with it. And, uh, thank you. Take care now. Take care. Take care. All right, so we're on to kind of other new business stuff. Um, the Delta sand and gravel cutting plan. Um, I did not see that in the meeting packet. Yeah, I uh, I was looking for it earlier and I did not see it. Um, we can I, I'll have Amy send it out to you, but it's a you know it's a fairly straightforward cutting uh, cutting forestry cutting plan. Uh, in the area, so it's just more for kind of notification to us. Uh, but Sean, you kind of know a lot more about this than any of the rest it's, of us do. They're not doing any expansion as well, right? They're just doing a harvest. It doesn't so uh -huh. a lot of times, like in Hadley, we just did a approved cutting plan for a gravel pit uh, where a portion of it was excluded and reviewed by the Conservation Commission because they were expanding the pit. And so they were cutting the trees oh, okay. on that edge and that doesn't get covered under an agricultural permit. And then they did a regular timber harvest behind that area and that was covered. So uh, looking at the cutting plan, you'd see if there was an excluded area um, that that would be, I mean, that's the only thing a gravel pit might do is expand their gravel pit area, but it might just be doing a harvest. I don't know. And I had one other question, but it's really more for Amy, uh, and it was that um, we should be getting copies of the approved cutting plans. So, and those don't necessarily look like the ones that we get initially, because there will be changes that happen before the service forester signs off on it. Um, so we should probably, rather than just have those filed, put them in our meeting packets as well, the approval ones, so that we know what they look like. We don't have so many in Deerfield that it'll be um, cum cumbersome to uh, have those included too. It'd be good um, to see. Okay, so that's the the follow up approval, and where does yeah, that come so from? Yeah, so when DCR, when I yeah. approve or Allison Wright, our service forester, approves a plan, uh, the Conservation Commission gets a copy of that approval. Um, and that approved copy won't necessarily match the first copy we saw because that service forester will have made map changes, mine change all the time, you know, different stream crossings, added wetland crossings. Sometimes, you know, wetlands get added, streams get added, things of that nature. And then it gets approved and it's not, it's all good, um, but it'd be good for us to see the approved copies. Okay. So we should uh, alert Amy to that too, right? Cause my um, guess is she must be just filing them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, yeah, I just found it while I was poking around here. Um, but Sean, maybe you send a, a note to Amy and I about, you know, including, including. the approvals. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. So yep. here's the cutting plan, um, Delta Sand. So, um, Sean, tell me what I'm looking for here. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, so uh, there, there, it's looks routine. It'd be more like going to the map to see if there was an excluded area that um, isn't related to the cutting plan, but might still have work being done. And so right there. Um, so I don't know, you know, it'd be better just to sort of have time to look at it. Um, mm. Okay, so they're, they're sort of doing a couple of cutting areas, sep three separate cutting areas. Yeah, so it doesn't appear to be associated with a uh, gravel pit expansion, it just looks like land that they're harvesting on. Um, so that was my only question. Um, oh, this is approved. This one, it's all it's all set and done. Oh, anyway, okay, so this so, is the, you don't get this certificate yeah. unless it's approved. All right, so Allison signed up on. So we up. Oh, okay. So one thing, like uh, Longview, should have sent the Concom a, a copy 
as well when they sent their copy to the town. But they're out of Vermont, so they might not be all caught up on how we work down here. But it doesn't really matter, you know, as long as we have Allison doing her job. Yeah, okay. Some of my towns get really upset when they don't get a cutting plan and they get an approval like that. Yeah. So like Hadley, they have an, their own agent and uh, they'll get very upset if I send them my approved copy for a cutting plan, like a gravel pit, you know, uh, if they didn't get a copy to look at first from the forester so that they can see if the wetlands yeah. are mapped. That's yeah. the only thing we're allowed to do in this is to confirm that the wetlands are mapped appropriately if we want to do that um and to to look like in the case of a gravel pit that it's all agricultural and no expansion or excluded thing so but yeah i'll send uh that one's the final that one's the approved copy i just i've been looking for the approved copy for the uh eagle brook cutting plan uh, oh, okay to, to, and it might not right. be approved either. She might have held on to it. It might be something that she's waiting for. Um, so anyway, that's the normal process is we get an unapproved copy and then we get an approved copy from the state with that orange certificate saying that it's all set. So, okay. So on Allison's this map, really though, good. Yeah. On this map though, John, should they have, they have listed over in a legend, oh, Marsh Bar, Cranberry Salt Marsh, over water, water. should they have, details of wetlands limited uh, uh you know so they identified have identified or 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 at least state that there's no wetlands you know there are the, they it looked like they did map them were those the blue areas yeah maybe that right in and there it looks like they were trying to keep their harvest outside there were several stream crossings so it says uh, filter so, strip in the blue areas i don't know yeah so those filter strips are 50 feet on either side of streams. Oh, okay. So every filter strip is associated with a stream um, or uh, we don't have a filter strip on wetlands. So you can cut right up to the edge of a wetland. You can cut inside a wetland, uh, but the wetlands yeah. need to be mapped. Um, I'm not looking at, the, at it anymore. Um, I saw that there was no harvesting in wetlands. That's on the front page. So on the map if they were cutting in wetlands then they would have on the front page you know harvesting in wetlands how many acres and that they are going to leave uh 50 percent um so see on the middle of the screen harvesting in wetlands there's nothing filled in there so yeah, okay. they're not going over any wetlands not crossing no wetland anything. crossings no harvesting in wetlands it it's probably all rapid draining streams we've been on uh, that hillside uh, before so it's pretty sandy soils i think over there so um okay. they're going to do a bunch of bridges and and pulled crossings there's it looks like there's only two existing culvert crossings the yeah. rest are, are crossings that they're going to do temporary put in and pull out okay, so, okay. yeah if if say if we had gotten this on earlier and it got emailed out to me i might I know Allison does her job, but I might, might look on the on our DE, like on our mass mapper, and just look closely at the wetlands and say, "Oh yeah, they're mapped pretty closely to what this map shows." Yeah. And if there's anything different, Allison's going to go on the ground and she'll be able to fine tune it. Okay, All that's right. how how it should go. Usually, yeah, we sure. wouldn't weigh in. I'm not sure why this thing is sent out, but uh, good to know. Yeah. Well, that's great. But once we see the orange, it's all set to go, right? <laughs> we can still comment. We can comment yeah. at any point in time. And if if somebody in town had a concern, uh, I would usually point them to Allison. Um, yeah, right. You know, rather than address the concern ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it really is an agricultural exemption. It's just with a gravel pit, I often think like, oh, gravel pits expand, you know, like, and, yeah, and they usually yeah. do that with it. It's usually they're expanding their gravel pit. And then the guys are like, well, why don't we cut some timber while we're here? You know, um, <laughs> yeah. so could go the other way here, you know, it, yeah, stream crossing one, stream crossing two. So they're going a ways, their harvest areas. I don't see where the stars are the landing areas, I think. No, those are just the stream crossings, log landing. 
I don't know where they're landing their wood here. It's not close to where this. Uh, hmm. But yeah, Allison's a tight runs a tight ship. Um, so. Okay. I have Good. plenty of faith in her. And if she had any questions, she'd bring it up to us. Okay, great. And we'll try to get those because uh, when I looked through the meeting package and I was like, oh, where's this one? But I found uh, this email, but um, we'll have to make sure that <laughs> Amy gets this stuff shared with everybody. All right. Um, just in, under the general discussion, uh, we did receive notice um, from, I think it came from Mass Wildlife on the biomap resource resource mapping. Uh, here's the uh, website mass.gov forward slash biomap. Um, I looked at it. I think Amy sent it out to you. If not, Amy can get you that um, um, link or you can go to the link. It's, um, what would I say? Somewhat useful, um, but I think our, you know, our, our Mass GIS uh, wetlands map is probably more applicable to us, but it, it does have a bunch of overlaps and overlays and, and things you can see. So it's worth taking a look at. So that is just more for general discussion. Um, second one is a webinar of uh, demystifying floodplain management um, that came out from uh, MassGov as well. And I don't know if anybody sat in on it, but it happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to sit in on it, and uh, I think Amy sent it out to everybody, or she should have. But I, uh, I just yesterday went crazy, so I thought it might be interesting. But I don't know if uh, maybe I can ask Amy to see if we can get a uh, recording of it or some information. But anyways, you'd have to go back a day in in order to uh, to do that. So a little time traveling. Um. So the next one that we're talking about on the mail, we did get a notification from the Department of the Army, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers relative to uh, all states material group and that was in the package. Um, and this is relative to their um, extension of the um, the Hall Road um, that we did a lot of work with over a couple of years to get in place. Uh, but the uh, Army Corps uh, did verify that the activity is authorized under the permit, and um, they gave them the go-ahead on that. So um, what I will do, I will reach out to, can't think of a name on top of my head, um, but say, you know, you know, just following up on this, they do have to uh, submit a, uh, a note uh, back to the uh, Army Corps when they're ready to go. But I, I will reach out because I, I think we definitely want to spend some time there um, reviewing the the NOI, the conditions, um, the peer review, and and spending some time looking at the site um, as they put in the erosion control. This had a lot of a lot of intricacies to it, you know, changing the waterways, going underneath, and stopping it, starting it, and so forth. Um, so I do want to make sure that we we do our due diligence of um, you know the reviews before a project. So I'll reach out to um, to them now that I know it's um, get past this next hurdle. Any other comments on that? Kate, your cat have any comments? <laughs> she was listening very closely. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so that was a notice in. Uh, the other mail was from MACC for our membership renewal, um, which I will, I think it's due before August 1, but we'll uh, take care of this in the next week or two. So we have the, um, we'll continue um, with our membership in the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions. Um, and um, and Mary, we're going to have to add your name because it's not on the list yet um, here. So uh, we will get that done. Um, and it's a it's a pretty good association. And uh, we have Kate Devlin that has gone through all of their courses and got the the, the gold star for um, 
doing all the training and everything. I think it was eight different courses. Um, got a press release on and all sorts of good stuff. Um, Just trying to figure out what we're supposed to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah me too. I, I got through like four or five of them. I think Sean's got through about four or five. So we're, we're trying to catch up with you. Um, and then, so the things that we do with that, um, we'll get the um, updated commissioner um, roster in uh, with our application. And just to remind everybody um, that we'll add the new, uh, you know, Anne Mary, and and this is one of the good things I do right off the bat. There's a introductory course that um, you can sign up for. I think it's within the first 90 days of your, um, you know, starting as a commissioner here. Um, and they're going to reach out to. I'm sorry. Free of charge. Uh, so you can just reach out to uh, Amy and um, ha have her get registered. They they have different dates and stuff, but okay. they offer that to you. Um, and then they do have, I think, four basics and four advanced. Is that right, Kate? Of, of different trainings and such uh, along the way. We, you know, I've never heard back from the town, and, and Chris, maybe you can let me know. But uh, we put in for a. a I put in for a higher budget uh, for this coming year to to cover up uh, uh, to cover some of our additional expenses for because we were going through a lot of training with new members and um, Chris I never heard if anybody shut me down or just uh, went ahead with what I asked for. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. I I don't remember <laughs> hearing about that one way or another. So because um, okay. I, I basically asked for a doubling. And okay. It was only a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars, whatever, and it was based on what we spent over the last two years to try to make it a little bit more real, but. Sure, yeah. I can check the budget binder tomorrow and see okay. what yeah. got approved as compared to previous years. Yeah, because with that, then some of us will need the additional courses and I think they're 50, $60 each or something of that nature. So we, we do have to watch our budget on that. And I also put in the budget um, request, what I'd like to do um, is get some, um, as we do site visits, we're often on industrial sites or on the highway. Um, I'd like to get some like safety vests and such for the commissioners when we're out there to cover that safety issue. And also, you know, maybe some just basic log books um, that we can fill out when we're doing our work in the field and that would ultimately go back to the town for their records. So there's a couple of things in there that um, I will, uh, uh, push on the, the select board to to go ahead with but um, sure. some safety and some other things but yeah if you could let me know Chris that'd be great yeah I'll send you an update with what I find yeah and then the other things just to remind everybody that uh, MACC does for us is a mass helpline you know they're, they're constantly open there's a uh, a website for it that um, you can reach out with questions if we need to um, there's a, the environmental training aspect of it um, there's wetland um, handbook resources, which I have four or five of them around here uh, in my office. I've got from them that are pretty, pretty good. Um, there's an annual uh, conference, which I believe is in March every year. And then there's a fall conference. Um, so if anybody would like to attend these conferences, we'll have to get approval to, to do so because it'd be a cost on each one of them. And they do provide also field workshops through the year. Some of these are free. Um, some are very low cost, um, but they would require travel and, and showing up at some places. Most, of, as you can imagine, like we're all used to living in uh, Western Mass. Most of the stuff is happening in Eastern Mass. So <laughs> there'd be some travel from time to time, but we will be up for that. Okay. Any questions on that one? And um, Ann Mary will get you, you know, reach out to Amy, but I'll remind Amy to uh, get you signed up for those courses too. What's Amy's last name? Uh, Amy, um, tip my tongue. Um, Han. Han. It's H A N. H A A H A H N. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the only other item that popped up in the last forty-eight hours is that we've scheduled a site walk tomorrow at the Treehouse uh, Brewery. Uh, company uh, campus. Um, it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. I know Sean's able to make it. Kate is thinking you can make it. Um, don't feel you have to make it. It's um, 
uh, part of their conditions from a couple years ago on one of the phases was to do a reclamation area where we're looking at a 85, 80 to 85% or 85% um, growth validity over a two year period. This is coming into their second growth uh, year. So last year didn't, it looked like a lot of just dirt. <laughs> and so we're hoping to see something coming up this year. And the second part of it, um, uh, Treehouse is, is totally open to assisting us with uh, educational signage uh, on their walkway uh, relative to the conservation um, issues in the area. And um, I guess Sean, as a, as a volunteer, and I have another volunteer, which is my wife, Gretchen, um, to help start working up some of the uh, verbiage on that. So we can look at that tomorrow as well, but that's, um, that's happening in the morning. And Sean, if we, if we have a few minutes, we might run up to um, um, Eagle Brook and take a look at the track real quick. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. That's yeah. all I have. Anything else from anybody that I missed on the agenda or that came up? Kate, Kate wanted in on this signage uh, game too. So yeah. she's she's involved. Plus she has yeah, I see her she hand going the up. mighty she's resources volunteered. of GCC. So nice. Right. Good. Because <laughs> we want to take that. And I've I've talked to um, planning board about it. Um, because they have another committee working on signage. Um, I think we want to kind of just take it as we go ahead. Maybe we come up with some you know, standard design that the, the rest of the town would work for trails and, and such. Um, but um, with um, with Treehouse especially, they've already offered to do all of this on their own, their costs, do the, all the graphics, do everything for us, put the signs together. Um, we've brought it up with um, Sunny Days. They're open to this as well. Uh, I, I guess I could be bold enough to ask Damien at Treehouse if he would, uh, you know, be able to do the signs for another uh, another company or so in town and see if they can pay him back or whatever. Um, and I think we just want to move ahead with some of this stuff. Um, actually, we should have put it on the agenda, but Kate and I uh, sat in on a meeting with um, Brock <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago the uh, regional council of government uh relative to the uh, bloody brook and there is some money coming into town uh relative to some uh, planning money for bloody brook the town as you probably all know has plans for the downtown campus area um bloody brook will come through there um frock has started working on that a couple years ago and it kind of went quiet and now it seems to be a little bit more on their radar of, you know, what's happening with the with the Bloody Brook watershed. There's some money coming in for some studies. And, um, and Kate, I think both you and I, you know, kind of address the need for, you know, educational uh, aspects to not only the, the, the homeowners that live there, they need it, but also, um, you know, for the whole town, uh, utilization of things like the elementary school projects, uh, high school projects, maybe even GCC, you know, for their students to, to work with in some of the, in the uh, ecosystem there in the watershed. So there'll be more to come on that. I am waiting to hear back from them. And um, Carol and Ness is kind of driving the ship on this one. Uh, I need to talk to Carolyn at some point too, but that's another thing that we uh, sat in on a, a week or two ago on on uh, um, you know just that area so on Bloody Brook it's, it's quite an area and there's so much differences as you head down the the brook the stream from good swampland stuff up stop to a great channel right through uh, a lot of residential housing and then into some urban development area so one of the things that um, was really interesting that came out of that meeting was them talking about the funding for um, Japanese knotweed control. Oh, yeah, yeah. That there's possibility for that. If we do the, the legwork or if the town can do the legwork and get homeowners and others on board, then um, yeah. the feds can help. 
Yeah, that's, can, that's, can, yeah. keep reminding me of that because uh, there was a name, I think it was the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where there are some funding mechanisms, which would be a, a, a great thing instead of all these individual homeowners having to try to do it themselves. But Kate's okay, right, we got to do the legwork, put everything kind of our plan together and our scope. Um, but that'd be it's great. It's a real opportunity where we wouldn't have to, they wouldn't have to fund it themselves individually. But if, you know, because it, it, the knotweed just goes up and down the brook everywhere, you know, <laughs> yeah. just stop at somebody's property. Um, yeah. And that could be really beneficial. Yeah. And there will certainly be more to come as the town looks at um, their downtown development plans. And um, a lot of it kind of revolves around that lower area or the middle area, if you will, of, of Bloody Brook. And um, there's some riparian areas in there there's a lot of invasive species in that area um there's a lot of you know bloody brook is um right through the middle of town but there, there's a lot of issues and there certainly will have to come in front of us to um, go through a lot of those details before we're done so i'm sure there'll be more to come on that but yeah kate thanks for reminding me of that because we do have to really think about that it's a good answer Anything else? Yeah. Japanese yeah, non edible, just so you know. You can eat Is it. Is what? You can, can eat, eat it? it. Yeah. <laughs> does it make you keep expanding like it does out in, in nature? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Eatable, edible. Interesting. Um, okay. If there's not anything else, um, I would just say that our uh, next meeting um, is actually a month away. Um, no special meetings that I know of yet. Um, so it'll be July 27th at 6 p.m. And with that, I would take a motion to adjourn unless anybody else has any other comments or questions tonight. Negative. Make a motion that we adjourn. Oh. <laughs> All right. You got uh, it. <laughs> okay. Got it. Do I have a second? I'll second, Ben Burn. Okay. Motion to adjourn this evening at 6.58. is on the floor. Do a roll call. Sean Levy. Sean Levy, aye. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Uh, ben Burn. Ben Burn, aye. Pete Law, aye. And as I say, that's a wrap. <laughs>